I pray now, Lord, for this time we have this morning to redeem it and use it wisely. I pray for wisdom. I pray, Father, for the gift of teaching. I pray you'd open the hearts of the people, Lord, to receive your word. And I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, before I get into the lesson today, I'm going to give you a little bit of news that has just recently come out. And these are things that uh, you're going to find very interesting. Uh, Dr. Raymond Damadian is the inventor of the MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging. A lot of you have had an MRI. You've been to the hospital, did this part of diagnostic uh, regimen. Here's what he says about evolution. It's a fairy tale. <laughs> it's a fairy tale. This is what this man, and by the way, I think it'd be good to, to mention here that he's the, um, he's the recipient of the 2001 Lamelson MIT Achievement Award, the 1988 National Medal of Technology from President Ronald Reagan. His name stands among America's greatest inventors, the National in Inventors Hall of Fame. So this is not some boy from Hey Boy Corner. This man is a highly educated and respected uh, scientist. And he says that evolution is a fairy tale. I wish they'd told me that when I was in high school. <laughs> it's a fairy tale. Now, this is an interesting thing right here. A lot of people are beginning to have a lot of trouble to try to withdraw cash from the bank. Yes, in varying amounts. For a while, it was $10,000. Anything over $10,000, uh, immediately a red flag flies up. But now, it's just uh, apparently it's, uh, they, they don't like the idea of you drawing any substantial amount of cash out of the bank. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that they're headed toward a cashless society. That's what it means. That's exactly what it means. And it means that uh, now these sources here are uh, money wise, 411, no cash, banks refusing to release funds. And uh, the other one here is Agora. And it says new laws crack down on right to use cash. The U.S. government is trying to restrict your access to cash, not for the reasons you think. According to leaked evidence, it's much, much worse. And so now here's a very interesting thing right here. In search for cures, scientists create embryos that are both animal and human. This is what's called a chimera. Chimeras have been around for a long time. There's nothing new. But scientists, what gives them the right to create a monster under the, under the guise of science? And they are creating embryos that are both animal and human. Now, the idea is, of course, that they use this technology to extract uh, DNA. And, well, you get into what's called uh, uh, stem cells. And you all know uh, about stem cells. And a stem cell is a cell that can become anything. And your body starts out with stem cells and become anything. It's an amazing thing how God has created the human body that all these cells can develop in you. Once they s develop into some particular part of the body, it becomes a specialized cell and, uh, and, and remains such. But they use stem cell research today to try to treat, uh, treat cancers and treat uh, deformities in the body and what have you. Uh, stem cell research, research is quite a, quite a thing that's happening right now. And I'm sure that this idea of... Uh, creating embryos that are both animal and human verges on the uh, macabre. You, have you ever heard of uh, Dr. Moreau, the island of Dr. Moreau? You know, back in about, what, 40, 50 years ago? Way before DNA was uh, Before Crick and the rest of them found it, didn't it? Sure. Before DNA was discovered. And uh, the island of Dr. Moreau. Now... We have the Huffington Post. You remember what I've said to you now about, uh, about the uh, androgynous. Uh, don't get it confused with misogynist. Misogyny is where you, and you hear a lot of this. Now, the word misogyny is a word that you have heard over and over and over and over again. 
because of the feminist movement back in the 60s. The feminist movement started along about the same time as Woodstock. Uh, Woodstock's a very interesting thing. up in New York. I saw an old photograph the other day of a girl that was headed to Woodstock. Quite a thing. She had her, she had her, uh, she had her uh, uh, guitar slung around her neck, and that's all she had. <laughs> Serious. I saw the photograph. Uh, modestly, a side view, but nothing else. She was headed to Woodstock. Woodstock is a watershed event in America. A lot of people went to Woodstock, and a lot of the younger generation today, you know, the millennials, they have no idea what you're talking about when you talk about Woodstock. But uh, we, there was quite a transformation took place in this country, and the feminist movement came out. One of the, one of the things that came out of it was the feminist movement, with it the term misogyny. And the idea is that, uh, you know, if you say anything in derisive nature toward a woman, you're a misogynist, or you are a, if you're a male chauvinist, therefore you feel you're superior to a woman, so forth, and categorize it and use it in all kinds of ways. You can beat people over the head with it. We're not talking about misogyny. We're talking about androgyny. Androgyny is a different thing entirely. Uh, Baphomet, the, uh, the god of, uh, of um, what's his name back there in the, uh, the early, 18, early 1900s in England, can't think of his name, his most wicked man, Crowley, Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley uh, was a great fan of uh, Baphomet, and if you've ever seen a, a picture of him, you'll see that he is both male and female. Now there's the beginning. There's the beginning of the, of the uh, confounding the genders, male and female in one. And this is what's happening now with transgenderism. The transgender movement is confounding the identity, the gender of male and female. Once you lose the gender identity, you've lost your identity, period. And this is what's happening in the country. And I'm going to be reading some stuff for you here in just a few minutes by some very smart people that are observing the trends that are taking place in this nation. And it's our place and responsibility to try to get this over and show people what's going on. There are definite trends afoot, and we need to pay a special attention to them. But androgyny seems to be the darling of the New Age movement and this, uh, this idea that, uh, that, uh, that little girls, little seven, eight-year-old girls, have to worry about men coming into the bathroom or into their locker rooms. And this latest uh, edict passed down from uh, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is ramming down the throat of the people in this nation the idea that this small, very minuscule percentage of the population should enjoy the same rights that you do in the sense that they should be able to parade around in front of you the way they do. The last figure out was less than one half of one percent is transgender in this country. Ninety-nine point, uh, over ninety-nine and a half percent of the population must yield to the, uh, to the perverted agenda of transgenderism. Now, it's not just a matter of the state of North Carolina and the, the, uh, <coughs> the, um, the, law, the lawmakers in North Carolina passing a, a law saying that uh, we're not going to allow men in the women's bathroom. Amen. When that happened, right after that, a few days after it, last Thursday, as a matter of fact, Thursday evening, an edict came down, a royal decree came down from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue that all schools in this nation, what a leap, what a leap, all schools in this nation must open their doors and embrace the idea that a boy, if he thinks he's a boy one day and a girl the next day, if he thinks he's a girl that day, he has every right to go into the girl's bathroom. Now, the Charlotte Observer, it's quite a thing when you see what the Charlotte Observer, this is the newspaper, uh, one of the many liberal in our country, that's pushing this agenda. I'm going to read to you what it says. Now, you're going to be amazed at this editorial from the Charlotte Observer. This is remarkable, folks. I want you to buckle your seatbelts and listen to this. It's unbelievable. 
The Charlotte Observer, quote, schoolgirls must get comfortable with male, and I'm not going to use the word here they have, just say male private parts in the bathrooms. This editorial in the Charlotte Observer says that schoolgirls must get comfortable. Now, are you listening to this, folks? This is coming from the Charlotte Observer. Charlotte, North Carolina is the biggest city in the state. So obviously, this is the largest newspaper in the, in the state, which is supposed to be the most influential. By the way, this is the fourth estate. Remember what I told you about the three states of the realm, and then you've got the fourth estate. The first estate of the realm is the clergy or the house of worship. The second state of the realm is the king sitting on his throne. And the third state of the realm is the shop owner and the worker and the peasant in the field. And then the fourth estate of the realm is the news media, which is accountable to nobody. Never has been, never will be. And if they ever do print a retraction for some of their yellow journalism, it'll be about five or buried deep somewhere, uh, 10 or 12 pages into the newspaper. The idea is that the fourth estate, along with the educational system, along with the governmental system, molds and shapes the minds and thinking of the people. That is scary. The one who ought to be molding and shaping your mind and thinking should be the Word of God. For the Charlotte Observer is here today and long gone tomorrow, but the Word of God abideth forever. When America is nothing more than a distant memory of the past and some other civilization, if the Lord doesn't come back soon, rises to take its place and it becomes one more layer in some tale somewhere, the Word of God will abide forever. Yes, sir, will. Amen. It'll be here when the rest of it's long gone. The Charlotte Observer, a recent editorial in North Carolina's leading newspaper says that when it comes to transgender issues, girls must get used to seeing male private parts and so forth and so on. Now, the reason I do this is I want you to see how quickly this agenda is moving. This agenda to bring in transgenderism is uh, far above and beyond gay marriage. Now, you may think, what are you talking about? Gay marriage is nothing in the world more than a ruse to cover up what's really going on. Transgenderism is going to go to the very heart and soul of what makes this nation a nation and what makes you who you are. So you need to deal with the issue of transgenderism. All right, here is, a, here is a remarkable revelation published in the Huffington Post. Now, you're about to hear something. You're about to hear something that is blasphemous. This is published by Maggie McNeely, May 19, 2016, very recent. The Huffington Post has uncovered a fact that thousands of biblical scholars and theologians have missed. Jesus was the first transgender man. Now, that's blasphemy. But, folks, these people spare no, they spare nothing. These are vicious people that will go for your jugular. And I've told you before, anybody that will jerk a baby from its mother's womb and cut it to pieces and suck it out with a suction cup or put hot, hot put acid in there and burn it up, they'll kill you. Don't kid yourself. But listen to this. These, uh, this, this fact has been uncovered that uh, biblical scholars, theologians have missed. The HuffPo writer Suzanne DeWitt Hall, so the, author, the author of this article is Maggie McNeely. She's not the one who, who posits this position. The position comes from Suzanne DeWitt Hall. The current flap in conservative Christian circles about bathroom access is a bit baffling, according to Ms. Hall. She claims that God created transgenders in Genesis after all. But even worse are Christians who claim to take the Bible literally. Of course, they don't actually do that, she says. They impose their own filters on stories and phrases to fit their particular ideology. My, 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 can you imagine? Somebody that says he's transgender and they accuse us of filtering the scripture. 
That's not what Hall is doing when she claims Jesus was a transgender, not at all. The Bible tells us that Eve was the first example of human cloning, as well as the first transgender woman. God reached into Adam, pulled out a bit of a rib bone, grew Eve from that XY DNA into Adam's companion. She was created genetically male and yet transformed into woman. How many times have I told you that Adam, Adam is a generic word, Adam. The Hebrew word is Adam. What do you mean generic? It means this. It means mankind. See? Both male and female make up mankind. Is your wife part of mankind? Is she a man? No. But she is mankind. She's not horse kind. She's not dog kind. I know when you get mad at each other, don't no tell them what you say. <laughs> Trying to be nice here this morning. <laughs> but the Bible says in the book of Genesis, each after its own kind. Kind, see? And so when Noah took these, these, uh, these animals onto the ark, all he had to take was two. And from that original pair, everything else you got. Dogs, for example. All the dogs could come from one set. So, you know, a lot of folks forget that fact. Now, mankind, Adam means mankind. The only person in that book of Genesis, chapter number one, at the, at the beginning that had a given name was Eve. Adam called her name Eve, which means life spring or, or source of life because that, 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 that mankind would come forth from Eve. God called their name Adam, T-H-E-I-R, their name Adam, see? In other words, God called their name mankind. But these perverts love to take that and they like to twist it and pervert it to their own warped mind and make it say what it doesn't say. Eve was not a clone of Adam. And in Adam was not transgender, nor was Eve transgender, was nor the Lord Jesus Christ transgender. They got the, well, we'll get into the Lord in just a minute. The Bible says Eve cloning, God pulled a bit of rib bone, so forth and so on, rib bone. Uh, she was created a genetically male and yet transformed into a woman. Now, where do you get, where's the scripture for this lady? Uh, uh, proof, transgenders were created. Proof, give me a scripture. Rib bones are all that determine gender. But Hall's logic, if Mary was a transgender, then of course Jesus was too. The Holy Spirit comes upon the second Eve and the child takes flesh from her and is born with XX, XX chromosome pairing, both genetically female and yet transformed into man. Born genetically female and yet transformed into man. The author also claims that we don't have a black and a white God. Creation is so full of color and variation that it is incomprehensible how we Christians struggle to pare down to the limited palette of our individual expectations. When she tries to make the biblical narrative fit her transgender agenda, that's not pairing the workings of God to her own expectations. Only conservative Christians do that. And on it goes. But here's the point. That's a bold leap. That is a bold leap to say that the Lord Jesus Christ is transgender. Is it not? Yes. That is a bold leap. Because what she has done is go to the very heart and soul of the atonement, of the incarnation, of the Godhead. And by doing that, she's recreating and she's making a monster out of God. And she'll recreate it in her own image and her own fashion and her own way. And so the point here, though, is that this is quite a thing for them to print something like this. Now, think about it a minute. We live in a generation today, 2016, that if you look at somebody the wrong way, they get offended. We live in a generation today, if you say anything that's not part of the political correct uh, 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 dictionary, uh, you're, you're accused of hate speech. We live in a generation today that is so picky and so easily offended with anything and everything, you know, that, that you have to be very careful today or you're going to make somebody mad. Yet they can take this and they can turn my Lord Jesus Christ into a pervert and I'm not supposed to be offended. Or well, they can take a bottle of urine and they can put an image of the Lord Jesus down inside a bottle of urine and I'm not supposed to be offended. In plain words, they can say anything they please about a Christian and we are supposed to roll over and take it. That's the kind of hypocritical, duplicitous, 
generation that you're part of today, don't let them flim flam you. They do not want freedom of speech. They do not want debate. They do not want to be, they do not want to have to be able to stand up and defend their position. They want to intimidate and browbeat you and force you to remain silent and shut you up and keep you from being able to put your thought or your idea into what's going on. By doing that, George Orwell said, the time's going to come. You know, he wrote the novel, 1984, Big Brother. He said this a long time ago. He said, the time will come when Big Brother controls everything you say. And that is exactly where this thing is headed. That's remarkable, don't you think? Now... The transgender agenda seeks to redefine everyone. We'll talk about that in just a moment. How many of you know Chuck Norris? I wouldn't want to fight him. <laughs> Chuck Norris. I mean, this guy is a, uh, is absolutely, I mean, he's the top. He's the top. He's up there. Uh, he's, he's quite a martial arts uh, uh, expert. A lot of people respect him. Now, I've observed him for a few years and I believe that Chuck Norris is definitely a decent man. And I've observed him, and, and I think he's a Christian man. He's, he says he's a Christian, and that's, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, that's good. In other words, I don't have anything to, I have no bone to pick with Chuck Norris. He just said this just a few days ago. And I thought it was quite a remarkable thing. How many of you remember Joan Rivers, the actress? How many of you know how she died? Under very mysterious serious circumstances. Do you know when she died? Right after she said that Michelle Obama was a trans transsexual. Uh, how many of you know that Prince just passed away? How many of you know that Merle Haggard just passed away? Now, I, don't, I, never, I didn't listen to Merle Haggard, didn't listen to Prince. Uh, you know, I'm not up here to promote either one. But these two people said something about what I'm going to read here. They said something. Now, the reason that, uh, that people listen to these people are because they are celebrities. They are well known. They are known by millions of people. Merle Haggard's been around forever in the country music scene. And, 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 and Prince was definitely, he was kind of, they said he was like Michael Jackson. He was at the top of his, uh, of his uh, music genre. Here's what Chuck Norris says. He says that uh, he accuses sky criminals of waging secret war on the public. What's a sky criminal? Actor and activist Chuck Norris called out the sky criminals in his latest op-ed examining several pieces of evidence showing a global geoengineering scheme may possibly already be underway. What are you talking about? Chemtrails. There's a lot of information available on the Internet if you want to do some research on your own that connects chemtrails with transgenders. Have you ever noticed that there is an explosion of transgenderism going on today? Have you noticed there's an explosion of lesbians showing up today? Have you noticed there's an explosion of homosexuals, sodomites showing up today? Why is that? Now, in every case, and this is very important, in every case, this is very important. There's only one line of truth, and that's the Holy Ghost. There's only one source of absolute truth, and that's the Word of God. Therefore, if you are born again, if you are a real Bible believer, you've got the Holy Ghost in you. Every other religion on the face of this earth is connected to another spirit. And they are all interconnected. I don't care if it's witchcraft. I don't care if it's Gnosticism. I don't care if it's New Age movement. It doesn't make a difference to me if it's the Green Movement. It doesn't matter if it's the United Nations Religion Initiative. It doesn't matter who and where it's coming from or what they claim to be. They are all interconnected because they're all connected to the same spirit. And the spirit they're connected to is not the Holy Ghost. That's why they hate you. They hate you because you have the Holy Spirit in you, which is the only true living God. And because of that, they despise you. 
This, this thing about chemtrails is just the beginning. There's a whole lot more going on with chemtrails than simply affecting the gender. Uh, I can't prove that, that it's affecting the gender, but I've often wondered why all of a sudden, I mean, I was born in 1946. Folks, back then things weren't like they are now. Why all of a sudden do we have this explosion and perversion? Why all of a sudden do we have all these people that are getting so mixed up about their gender identity and everything has changed? Where did all this come from? I know this. I know that they have received the Spirit. I know every one of them have a Spirit. They've received that Spirit. And it's not the Spirit of the living God. There's another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit, other Bibles, all this stuff, other churches. But there's only one, one true and living God. And that's the one that is revealed in the Bible, the Holy Bible, the Word of God. The Holy Spirit, therefore, becomes a buffer for you. He becomes a light for you. He becomes the one who guides you into all truth. He's the one that teaches you when you see error and you come face to face with perversion. A red flag start flying up inside your soul. It may appear to you on the, on the surface as okay, but there's something wrong. There's always something wrong. So why are they doing this? And this leads you up to what this lady has to say about the agenda of the transgender movement. And I just read this yesterday. I've been doing a lot of digging. I've got probably, shucks, I don't know, 10, 15 hours in just this one lesson this morning. I spent all day yesterday doing nothing but reading and research. And one thing leads to another thing. And I said, Lord, lead me right. Help me with this. Because I want to give these people something when I get up here. To, to, uh, it's not the kind of thing you're just, you're not, you're not going to get the Knoxville News Sentinel tomorrow and read this. You're not going to get the local news station to report on this. But here's what this woman has to say. Would you like to hear her? This is a smart woman. Very, very smart Here's what she said. Now, I've jumped all the way down to the point here where she starts out with a man who has a baby, but he's really not a man. See, he's a woman who thinks she's a man, but then she gets pregnant and has a baby. And Oprah Winfrey on her show in 2008, uh, she has an exhibit introducing us to the first pregnant man. Remember, anybody remember that? I didn't see it, but, you know, that reminds you. All right, are you getting this? Are you following? Are you getting a hold of what's going on here now? The first pregnant man, and I'm sorry, but men can't get pregnant. I used to be able to tell the difference between man and woman anymore. I can't. I don't know what I'm looking at anymore, but anyway. Uh, here she brings us down to where are we now? Okay, this, for the sake of time, I'm jumping through a lot. If you'd like to read the whole thing, I'll make it available for you. Where are we now? While Americans have been distracted by same-sex marriage, transgender activists have been quietly changing laws all across the nation to redefine humanity on their terms. Are you listening? In fact, the enactment of gender identity laws has in many cases outpaced same-sex marriage legislation. So far, they've passed in 18 states, the District of Columbia, and about 150 municipalities. By the way, did you know that on Facebook, did you know that on Facebook, that they've got a category over there for gender identity? And did you know that they've got over 50 separate subheadings under gender identity? You need to go down the list and find out which one you are. Is that what it is? I missed something somewhere. I thought you had thought you had male and female, right? And, but it's amazing. Now listen to this. We're in talking about laws now. Laws. Now the transgender revolution is going on offense. In the past few weeks, and few weeks means, I, I don't have the date on this thing, but it's very recent. In the past few weeks, a virtual blitzkrieg of, dra of drag has rained down upon us from the media. Here are just a few items in the lineup. There was a big ink with a cover girlish Laverne Cox, transgender star of the Netflix series Orange is the New Black, on the cover of Time Magazine's June 9 issue, which announces we are at the tipping point of the mainstreaming of transgenderism. Are you getting this? A couple of weeks ago, Disney executives invited a drag queen, Maleficent, Malefi Maleficent, Maleficent, I guess, to greet Angelina Jolie, star of the long-awaited movie 
Maleficent on the red carpet at its premiere. Oxford University Press just the other day published Trans Bodies, Trans Selves, a resource book that is supposed to grow the transgender movement today in the same way our bodies, ourselves, grew feminism in the 70s. On June the 22nd, the National Cathedral Episcopal in Washington is scheduled to host the first sermon delivered by an openly transgender priest. Henry VIII would roll over in his grave. A barrage of meme-driven articles are appearing with titles like, I am the best feminist because I am dating a trans woman, or my story is not your growth experience, and on it goes. It's ironic that those leading the charge for transgender revolution would claim there is only one right side to history. Nevertheless, none of this should surprise anyone who's been paying attention. The whole movement has been prepped by the push for genderless marriage. The Supreme Court's Windsor decision last year and its consolidation by activist judges striking down state laws on marriage has been the cue the transgender movement has been waiting for. After all, the T for transgender in LGBT has been around for decades, custom built into that agenda. There is much, much more to come. There's no end in sight. How deep are we into this transgender thing, she poses. On the surface, the transgender package, which is assortment of gender identities, to many still resembles a fringe movement or a passing fad. So lots of folks have been duped into thinking the purpose of it all is to grant equal rights to a minority, minority demographic. But it's really about changing the language and redefining us all. Now, I'll be 70 in September. I'll be gone for long. But you young people in here in your teen years and your 20s and your 30s, if the Lord doesn't come back soon and catch us, you're about to face something that you can't even imagine. Indeed, civil rights is always a nice line. It works well to stop debate. There's lots of emotional blackmail involved because of the social punishments, labels of hater or bigot heaped upon anyone who might question the agenda. See, there's the hate speech. So how might an elite impose collective belief formation upon an unwitting public? It's about marketing, of course, injecting uh, hype into public discourse in order to build opinion cascades. An interesting academic look at this is the Stanford Law Review, article by Cass, Cass Sustain, Sustain, Sunstein and Timur Kuran on availability cascades. It, it, it explains how you can take an implausible idea and make it seem plausible by raising its availability in public discourse. In plainer words, it is really unrelated to the topic, but it's going to be brought in constantly, transgenderism, transgenderism. It's going to be constantly held before your view, your eyes, so that you are going to see it. Of course, we see these things applied by mass marketers, Oprah Winfrey, talk shows like The View, that serve to shape and mold and cajole new ways of thinking into the mindset of millions of listeners. We can't underestimate the role of language, of the language police in forcing compliance with any agenda that hides under the civil rights, civil liberties claim. Transgender advocacy groups seem to hold very high and specific requirements and expectations from the public and media in terms of how they expect to be understood and talked to. GLAAD, G-L-A-A-D, GLAAD's Media Advisory Guide contains a long checklist of do's and don'ts when one is talking to or referring to a transgender person's. Pronouns, of course, are a very touchy subject. Other lists are put out by various advocacy groups, including Transgender Equality, Human Rights Campaign, Gender Spectrum, and a Cal Berkeley group to name but a very few. These convoluted lexicons foisted upon a docile public are daunting, and they're no doubt meant to be. And inter interestingly, use of such linguistic gymnastics happens to be an essential device in teasing out a cult mindset. Margaret Thaler Singer, an expert on cults, has written about the role of rhetoric in stifling independent thinking among cult members. 
As members continue to formulate their ideas in the group's jargon, this language serves the purpose of constricting members' thinking and shutting down critical thinking abilities. One large international group, for example, has dictionaries for members to use. One can search from term to term trying to learn this new language. According to Singer, Orwell reasoned that if a government can control all media and interpersonal communication while simultaneously forcing citizens to speak in politically controlled jargon, it could blunt independent thinking. As we navigate the labyrinths of identity politics, we must never forget that forcing changes in our language forces changing in our thoughts. And in the case of gender identity, this means accepting language that universally redefines or perhaps more accurate, accurately undefines us all. She dealt with the issue of the changing of the language. She also deals with the issue in this paper about how that the government will eventually change its attitude toward marriage itself and children as they relate to their parents. It's going to change everything that has to do with the structure of the home. The structure of the home is the foundation of civil society. If they can destroy the structure of the home, they will create a global citizen. A global citizen that is nothing in the world more than an Ottoman to be told when to move, where to move, how to move, and they'll be under the complete control of the state. You see it right now working in the very heart of people because they're changing their added, they're changing their vocabulary and the way they view things. The sad thing is that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. People go to church houses today that they hear nothing that I'm telling you right now. They're completely ignorant of the fact that there is an agenda out there to destroy the very things that they hold dear and sacred to their heart and to their soul. To my knowledge and to my understanding, if they've taken your children away from you, you've got nothing left. You can go to your house and you can drive your car. You can fly your plane and float your boat. You can count your cash. But if they've got your children, you've got nothing left. You are a pauper. And they are doing everything they can right now to eventually take your children away from you. One case in point. I don't have the paper, but I just read it yesterday. There is a woman somewhere out west that, that, uh, that was, there's nothing, nothing wrong. It's issue with, her, with, uh, with the control of her, with, with the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the, the custody of her daughter. And, uh, and she believed in, uh, uh, what do you call these? Chemtrails, all right? She believed there's a conspiracy going on with chemtrails. Judge spoke from the bench. The judge said, you are not qualified to raise your daughter if you believe that the government is involved in spraying chemtrails and uh, in a conspiracy that's going on, your daughter is being taken away from you. That's not supposition, that's fact. That happened. Now what's going on? What's going on? If that doesn't have a chilling effect on people, tell me what would. Her daughter was taken away from her because she, and that was the only thing, the only thing, and the judge admitted that. That was the only thing. She no longer had intellectual freedom and intellectual freedom of thought. If you don't think the way that Big Brother wants you to think, then you have a problem and you're not qualified anymore to raise your children. You tell me that that is not dictatorial. You tell me that that's not the worst thing that the government could do to you apart from just literally taking your life. What kind, what kind of a government are you living under? If it can take your children away from you simply because you disagree with the agenda. My. That is absolute tyranny. It is as tyrannical as the, uh, as the reign of terror that took place in France when they brought in the French Revolution, the latter part of the 1700s. It is it's tyranny. An engineer from Lockheed Martin did a study because he was trying to talk about chemtrails and he was going to dispute it. So he set up a, a little lab and he was taking air samples and of course he was
But of course, it's under the guise of something that's good and benevolent, you know, and all of that. And that's the idea. It's uh, it's what? Yeah, weather control. Yeah. For a long time, they wouldn't admit that, though. That was just, you know, they didn't want. I believe the batteries that's in your laptop computer, the battery that's in your cell phone, is called a lithium ion battery, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a concentration of people, see. That's a concentration of people. sad. Uh, when you get into the actual people that are involved in transgender, I'm sure you get into a lot of sad people, a lot of, a lot of problems. I mean, that's, that's another issue entirely that you're talking about. Uh, the people need help, and uh, that's sad. Uh, but what I, my point was today about the, uh, the agenda of the government and how they're trying to, and they've got a reason for this. There's an agenda here, and uh, you need to be very careful about this. You've got to be very careful now anymore with the government, folks. And I, you may say, well, that preacher's an alarmist. Well, check me out. You've got to be careful of the government today, what you say, what you believe, who your friends are. And uh, you've got to be awful careful because they will come after you. And, and when they do, you will be amazed at the power they can bring down on you. I mean, they have unlimited resources they can break any man financially in a heartbeat. They control reality. They do. That's what it is. They do. And they manufacture whatever they need to destroy. Yep. The professor uh, at some college, I can't remember which college, but I think I might send the uh, article. But he says all Christians ought to be treated like Nazis and prosecuted like Nazis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is coming from the professors. It's coming from that one, one part of the... Of the, of the uh, you know, the estate, the educational movement. Um, I spent a good bit of time reading about a couple of things, and I'll have to shut up. We've run over time here. The Franklin cover-up, how many's ever heard of that? And the Dutro affair, which took place in, in Belgium. And the reason I mention them is because you're talking about the, the buying and selling of human flesh. You're talking about, uh, you're talking about taking young girls and, and locking them up and using them for your purposes. And then you're talking about when, when they are exposed, you're talking about the cover-up, yeah. and it goes plumb to the top. Yeah. Bottom line, there are the people up here that are making the laws, that are sitting at the judge, that's sitting behind the bench, the people that are doing all of that are the very people perpetrating this stuff on you. So what hope do you have except in the second coming? Amen. 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 <laughs> Have word prayer, and, and we'll, we'll let you go. Second, even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Get us out of here. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Amen. They will be judged, too. They will be judged. When all men will be judged according. No, uh, they'll be judged. They'll be judged. They'll be judged. Brother Van Caldwell, dismiss us, please.
us all a heart, Lord God, and, and understanding. And Lord, give us that ear, my Father, that we'll hear what you say to us. I ask it in Jesus' name.